you had like a monumental turnout at your last book tour. What are you most looking forward to this time around? Uh, well, you know what? Last book tour, you know, I, my first book was an inspirational book, right? And so things could... It, it could get a little heavy, you know, there were tears, it was happiness, it was sharing, um, but this is a cookbook. So this is food, this is fun, this is, you know what I'm saying? And I love seeing people be happy, right? I love the excitement and I'm a foodie. I love talking about food, I love eating food. So I'm just excited to share that. I'm excited because uh, so many people always send me questions, you know, about, being vegan or, or asking about, okay, if I cook this, what can I use to substitute this? Or, you know, I, I can't eat peanuts. Can I, what can I use? Or I can't eat mushrooms. So, and a lot of times I get so many of those messages I can't respond to. So I'm excited about being able to do like Q&A and answer those questions in person. And of course, hug on people and love people and, and all those things and taking them pictures and just having like, it feels like a family reunion to me. I love yeah. that. <laughs> so you wrote that that food and cooking saved your life. And this is a commonly misunderstood concept. People seem to understand that certain foods can kill you, but you don't get a lot of thinking about healing foods. What's your take yeah. on that? I mean, it's exactly what you just said. I don't know why people don't, you know, connect the two. If it can kill you or make you sick, it can also heal you and, you know, keep you alive, right? And so for me, it did change my life and save my life, you know? And I wasn't a bad eater per se, right? I, I haven't had red meat or pork since I was 15. I was only eating chicken and fish. I'm allergic to dairy. So I had already cut dairy out of my diet on my own. Um, and so I was just eating like chicken and fish and turkey, you know, every day. And I was very sick. You know, and so once I watched a documentary, it was what the hell. And I was like, wait a minute, this may like they might be on to something. Let me try this thing out. And when I did the 30 day vegan challenge, literally in those first 10 days of not eating meat, I, a headache I had had every day for a year and seven months disappeared. So I knew it had to be what I was eating that was making me sick. And a lot of times, if we just listen to our body, if we just listen to our body, sometimes we'll eat something and be like, it's so funny. I, I see people making like videos and stuff all the time on like TikTok and Instagram. And they'd be like, uh, me over 30 eating ice cream and they run into the bathroom or they're, you know, they stomach hurt, but they continue to do it because they're, they're ignoring their body. They, they know that their body is going to they stomach gonna hurt, they're gonna have to make frequent trips to the bathroom or their skin break out, whatever the case. But why do you go back to it? Like, why do we want to suffer? We, it's just so crazy to me, right? And so if we just take the time to listen to our body, our body tells us everything that it needs and that it likes and what agrees with it and what disagrees with it, right? So that's really it. Food is medicine. It really is. So your recipe suggestions for people just starting out are mock dishes and people tend to talk down on vegan diets because they believe it's all these mocking meat dishes. So, you know, I know that you have some of that in there for the beginners, but what's your mm -hmm. overall thought about vegan food not necessarily being mock dishes? Well, I think when you say mock dishes, are you meaning like, um, like meat replacement, yeah. like products? Or no, no, I mean, of, like, um, you know, there's there's a, a, a good social media poke at your carrot dog. So it's saying, well, why yeah. not just eat a hot dog then? That kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Well, because we don't want to eat the, the, the meat, right? So I always tell people, I ain't go vegan because I ain't like how non-vegan food tasted. I went to save my life. Mm -hmm. But I still have the same cravings that I ate for, you know, 30 years of my life or 40 years of my life almost, right? And so if I can find a healthier alternative, it doesn't make me sick, but also gives me the same pleasure for my craving. Why not? You know what I'm saying? So, and a lot of times after you've been vegan for a while, I've been vegan now for five years, but after a while, you don't even crave, like I used to do a lot of the like, you know, uh, meat, like the fake meats and stuff. And I still eat them, but in the beginning you crave it a lot because you're craving what you're used to. Mm -hmm. But after time, I crave a lot of raw food now. I like the food as it is, you know what I'm saying? Or a lot of whole foods. I eat more whole foods instead of processed foods. But, um, you know, people who say that, I think they just want something to say. You know, nobody said those things when I was sick. Nobody told 
cared about what I was eating when I was sick, right? They only cared when I started to try to take care of myself. Wow. So I always say, well, honey, God bless y'all, you know? And that's also why I don't judge people. Y'all eat whatever, eat whatever you want. That's your business. But for me and my body, I know I listen to her and I got to eat what makes me feel well. Yeah. So, And I love that you brought up the, uh, the cravings because you talk about that in the book and saying that it might be craving seasoning. So when you were first transitioning your diet, what seasoning was like calling you and how did you remedy that craving? Well, the seasonings, they still be the same. Because, you know, I got my garlic powder, okay? <laughs> That's my main thing. I still season with garlic and herbs and spices, like all, all those things. Like that's why I have my own seasoning, right? My sunshine has like all my favorite things from turmeric to pineapple, to mango, to ginger, uh, all those things in one. I just love a little bit of sweet and savory. And so, um, yeah, I still season my food the same so I can get the same flavors. And all we really crave is flavor and texture. That's it. We don't crave the bone. We don't crave the blood. We don't, you know what I'm saying? We crave the texture and the seasoning. That's it. And so if I can get my texture and my seasoning down, and I'm all right. <laughs> right, definitely. Yeah, I think that's I think that's another misconception. People think you're eating like a you know a shoe or something like that. No, this is still food. Oh, grass. <laughs> they think we eat grass, girl. Just everyday <laughs> grass. <laughs> I was like, I ain't, I'm not skinny. So vegan don't look skinny, honey. I still eat very well. I got hips, thighs, and fries, okay? And Tab be eating very, very good. So absolutely. There are several notes throughout the book that mention that people shouldn't be too hard on themselves or take themselves too seriously. Why was this note so important for you to put throughout? You know, because that's something we do as a people, right? We are so quick to judge ourselves or be hard on ourselves. You know, you may be like, okay, it's Monday. I'm gonna start my diet this week. And by Wednesday, you eat something that you said you weren't gonna eat. Honey, you are beating yourself up. And I know that to be true because that's me. I've, I've done that. And we don't give ourselves grace. Okay, if you want it, eat, eat, eat the thing that you said you want. But then don't, you know, beat yourself up about it. Have a moment with yourself and say, Natalia, or, you know, I, I had this moment but I want to get back on track. You know what I'm saying? So it's all right to make a mistake. It's okay not to get it right, especially when you're cooking. Don't take yourself so hard in the kitchen. The world is so hard. We should not be part of the hard. We should be good to ourselves. So um, that's kind of, you know, the reason why I always remind people of that. And food should be fun, right? Food should be creative. Food should be family. It should be gathering. It should be memories. It shouldn't be feeling bad about ourselves. So I just always want people to just take it easy on themselves, enjoy your food, um, try something new, get in the kitchen and don't overthink it. You know, that's also why I don't cook with salt. I'd be like, y'all don't, don't put no salt in because you can't really mess up a meal when you don't use, you know, salt because you just put in herbs and spices. So but yeah, don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah, so then we need to talk about the tabisms that you have uh, on each page. And I love the one that says, use my voice if you need to. Um, obviously, we know there's there's been TikTok videos or people are just like so inspired by you. And they're like, I, as soon as I see her, her voice pops into my head. So I like that you <laughs> gave a nod to that. Um, did you write that you needed the, the cookbook to be you in book form so that people can feel like they're in the kitchen with you? Why yes. is that approach important to you? Because I, I don't want it to be in a mistake about it, right? It's called cooking from the spirit. Everybody know from the last five years of me doing videos, I don't use like recipes. I don't use measurements. I just do it as, as I go, right? And I also want people to feel like, yeah, this is Taya, right? Same way with my audio book. I recorded it in my voice. And people are like, people don't be doing no audio book for cookbooks, but I want people to download it and hear me in the kitchen and feel like that I'm in there with them, you know? And it's just important to make it feel like not just a book, like, oh, this tab, you know what I'm saying? So the pictures are vibrant. I remember when I was doing my um, photo shoot for the food with the photographer. And so, you know, we're plating the food and stuff. And I said, listen, the food got to look like me saying, get into it. <laughs> it's got to have that same effect that like when I do my videos, like y'all get into it. Did you see that? So it's just, I wanted to be me in book form. That's the best way I could put it. And I wanted people to feel like they got a little piece of tab in their kitchen with them and in their food. So 
almost like we get to have food together, like we get to share a meal together. That's, that's really exciting. And while you say that, so is there a way that you want people to connect with you once they have this book in their hands and they're, they're doing these recipes? How can they best connect with you with that? Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I have ideas already. I don't know. I could probably tell you. So, because my thing is like, once the, you know, people have the cookbook, because a lot of the recipes I've made before, but some of them I haven't made in a long time. But now that people have it, it can be one of those things where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go live, y'all. On this day, this time, we're going to cook this from the cookbook. So if you got the cookbook, we can do it together type of thing, right? And so it 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 also adds to that, oh, I am getting to experience this with Tab, right? Um, but then also just for people to learn to trust themselves more, you know, because a lot of times people be like, I cannot cook without measurements. And I'd be like, yes, you can. You can trust yourself enough to know what you like, right? So I just want people to, to have that feeling with it. Um, but yeah, if that answers the question. <laughs> you actually even went into my next question where I was going to say, well, what do you want to say to people who are nervous about not having the measurements, but you just said that. So I don't have any further questions for you, but if there's anything else you want our readership to know, we're a young um, Gen Z and, and millennial based publication, primarily black readership. If there's anything else you want them to know about vegan food or the cookbook or not being afraid to challenge themselves to try these things. Well, that, I think we covered it all, but I do, you know, I just want people to have no fear and keep an open mind, right? Um, and for me on a personal note that I always try to encourage people, don't wait until you get sick to try to make changes for your health, right? And how you eat. Try your best to at least five days a week, once a day, eat something that's intended for you to live well. And that's it. Wow, that's perfect. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. I'm looking forward to cooking with you. Yes, thank you so much.